Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to the part of Jenna No One Talks About. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that it has eight doors, but he said about hellfire, it has seven doors. What does it mean? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my doors are endless in paradise. You know, there are much mm. more. It also means that Allah's mercy is stronger than his um, punishment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, okay, this is paradise. This is my product. My product is expensive. It's valuable. And to work towards it is easy. It's easy, but you can make it hard. Okay. And Allah says, I don't want from you to do something you can't do. And to help you get into it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, um, if you think of a bad thing to do and then you change your mind, I'm going to count that as one good deed. And if you think of a bad thing to do but, and then you end up doing it, I'll count it as just one sin. But if you think of something good to do and then you changed your mind, I'll still give you one good deed for it. And if you end up doing it, I will give you from 70 to multiple folds to 700. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you rewards for just smiling in, 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 in your brother's face and bringing some happiness to them. It's a sadaqah. Moving something off the street is a sadaqah. Uh, even if you don't do anything and you go through pain and suffering and um, you're patient in that. Patient means you hold yourself together. You don't do things that are wrong. It doesn't mean that you don't cry and you don't... Like even if you complained a little bit, that's fine. So long as you don't just say something that's wrong, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will reward you for every suffering and pain that you go through and you are patient, whether it is bodily tiredness. Nasab. Anything you do, anything you work and you get tired, he's rewarding you for every second of tiredness that you're going through. Any kind of sickness, any sickness, even it's as simple as a cold. I'm going to reward you if you're patient with it. Um, worries. Um, so another word for it is anxiety, which means ham, worrying about the future. You have an exam coming up and you're worried about it, you get rewarded for it. Ram, ram means depression, right? The whole world is tightened up on you. Just like Prophet Yunus salam, when he was in the body in the fish and he felt the whole world is claustrophobic Allah says we saved him from the gham depression um, uh, any any hurt someone hurts you with a word or anything I'm going to reward you for it and he keeps going until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says even the tiny prick of a needle that hurts you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do that because he wants you to enter paradise okay paradise is uh, what no eye has ever seen no ear has ever heard and things that no heart has ever imagined we imagine up here we don't imagine mm -hmm. here so why did Allah say وَمَا خَطَرَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ بَشَرْ Qalb means the inside, your conscience, your feelings, your heart. Because you can imagine things with your brain. You know, we've seen all this imagination. Mm. But how do you imagine with your heart? How do you explain mm. what you're feeling of the heart? There are things you can't explain. Sometimes your love is so great for someone, you can't explain it. They make poetry and they still can't get there. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So no heart has ever imagined. Which means there are things in paradise that you cannot explain unless you're there. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in paradise, as soon as you enter, you need that first footstep. No matter what you went through in this life, the worst person has gone through this life will forget every single thing as if it never happened. They won't forget it as in from memory. They will forget the pain. They will forget the struggles. Everything. Mm. The closest example I can give to that, which is a very far example, but I'm saying something realistic in our life and maybe mothers will understand this we won't when they gave birth to us our mothers the pain that they went through i can't explain i won't even dare to talk mm. about it <laughs> mm. but what they describe is immense mm. as soon as the baby is born they tell you i don't remember the pain for next minute they want another baby why That's because funny. some kind of love yeah. something that allah gives you after that pain makes you forget the suffering mm. Allah. So imagine Allah gives you this Jannah and He says, even a bow's length that's in it is better than what the whole world and everything that's in it. The least person that gets in paradise are people who are saved from hellfire. They go into hellfire and they get charcoal burnt. Rasulullah said, until they die. Who are they? The ones who had an atom's worth of tawheed of iman in their heart. And Allah saves them. He takes them out. He says, I save them with my mercy. Places them in paradise. And they're placed in a river of life and they grow until they look like pearls. And then they see this paradise in front of them and Allah says to them, choose whatever you want from what you see. And they can choose from as far as they could see with their eyes. And they say, really, we can take all that? And Allah says, yes, and you will have double that amount too. 
so much for them that the people of paradise, they're so happy that they came here. So you think that we go in paradise, everybody's alone? It is the biggest sociable event in, that you could ever imagine, right? And there's no time, yeah? These people are so happy for you. Like the best thing about paradise is how much you love each other. Allah says, Everything that is negative that you feel in here is gone. And these people, they come up and they go, SubhanAllah, Allah saved them and put them in paradise. And they never did one good deed. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari. They never did one good deed. I'll even tell you a bit more about that, just the sociable part, which I've never spoken about. You know when you cross the bridge of the Sirat over Hellfire? And the believers, the ones who really did, did well, as mm. meaning the ones who were ahead, they prayed their five daily prayers, they helped, they did, they repented, all of that. Allah doesn't harm them. They go shoo, straight over the sirat. When they go over the sirat and they're safe, they look back. Who do they see? Muslims. Muslims they used to know in this life. Your friends, your mates. And they refuse, they don't go forward. They will not go to paradise. These Muslims are not going to go forward. They just stay there because they want to save their mates. They want to save their friends. And Rasulullah says that that day they sit on that. You, know, you can imagine them. They are pleading to Allah. Oh Allah, they prayed with us. We used to see them giving charity. Uh, 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 and they try to remember something you've done with goodness. They say, I witnessed, Ya Allah, we had a charitable event. They were there. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, uh, I saw them walking to the masjid. They prayed with us that Jummah. I remember, I remember Ya Rasul, they spoke tarawih with us. I remember, I remember I visited this, this person to help them and they came along. They'd use anything. And then Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu What do you think? Shafa'ah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prostrates and he says, Ya Rabbi, give me Shafa'ah. Let me intercede. And Allah says, you have it. And then he starts saying, Oh Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. So Allah then looks at these Muslims and says, Go. Go and take out every person you know from the former life who did one thing with you that was good or at least, take them out. So they have angels with them. They go and take the angels and then the angels, they carry them like baggage. Angels are huge, right? They carry... 10, 100 of them like that on their shoulders under their arms and throw them across. That's what the angels do. Some of them have reached their ankles. They're burnt in lava of hellfire, some up to their knees, some up to here. And their faces are still okay because that's the face they used to pray. Allah doesn't burn the face for these believers. They take him out. They keep taking him out until Allah says, go back now and, and, and take out anyone who had a, a coin's worth of iman in their heart. They take him out. Go back and take someone who's got a half of a coin's worth in there. Why is Allah doing that? Because he wants us to love each other. He puts that power with us. And that's also part of his mercy. Otherwise, he could have taken them out. When everybody's taken whoever they know and even whoever they can realize, there remains the ones who have fallen deep into the fire and their charcoal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets them die. Fayamutu. Why do they die? So they don't feel any pain. Because they've paid for all the sins they've done. So then Allah says, Baqiyat shafa'ati. The only thing left is my intercession. Rasulullah says he takes out of the fire. Hathayat. Hathayat means like a, we call when we shovel something. And he says, we, no one knows how many people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes out of hellfire. And he says, I have forgiven them. Subhanallah. They enter paradise. And these are the ones who are called the poor people of paradise or Allah's saviors, the ones who were saved by Allah. They never did one good deed, meaning the Muslims never saw them do a good deed in this life. So my advice is have friends. Have friends who are believers and strong and they call you to the masjid because they're going to mean so much on the day of judgment. What's the best thing to see in paradise? Allah's face. We don't know what it looks like. You know, it's just a word. But on the day in, in Jannah, you look up and this beautiful light comes down. Amazing light, more than the sun. And you think it's Allah. Okay, is, is this Rabbi? It's in the hadith. It says, is this my Lord? Comes down and ends up being a wife. <laughs> Can you imagine that? How beautiful she is? Huh? If you don't have a wife here, Allah makes a wife for you. You know, what about women here? Yeah, they also have husbands there, right? Now, Ibn Qayyim says, you have whatever you will. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of respect for the, for the women, he doesn't say stuff like that. But in paradise, you have your spouses and you think that light is amazing until you forget. You forget your palaces, you forget your horses, you forget your, the, 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 the trees and the rivers and all that beautiful spot. And you forget about the angels that have been coming in. Angels come to you and they speak to you and, and they love and they say, Salamun alaikum bima sabartum ba, peace be you that you were patient in the former life. And you forget. Then they bring to you a feast. They, they're chefs and you have people who serve you. They're your own servants. They look beautiful. They come to you and they smile and they say, anything you want, we'll give you. We love to serve you. We've been created to serve and we love to serve. It brings us happiness. It brings us... And uh, you keep doing all that stuff and then uh, someone calls out, says, go, go to that meeting place. Market, market means meeting place. Everybody goes from all around the world. Muhammad, the prophets, the prophets go. All the believers go. Everyone, the angels come around. Like it's bigger than the entire universe, you know, this place. And you go there 
everybody's together and then you see the prophets and you see all the other believers and then their light starts coming onto you and then you become prettier you become more handsome you become more beautiful because they're light it's like when you shake hands with someone who's got perfume and their perfume comes on you right mm. but their beauty comes to you and your wife looks at and goes you look more beautiful and you go and you say to her you look more beautiful too you're waiting there and then suddenly you hear someone they say and he, he says uh, are you pleased he says who's that he says yes we are pleased and then someone says it's Rabbuna it's our Lord it's our Lord and he says how can we not be pleased our Lord when you've saved us from the fire and put us into Jannah he says oh one more gift is left for you I haven't given it to you yet and I fulfill my promises I said what else Ya Rab what else because you can't imagine that your mind is taken away by this beauty you forget that you need to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَيَكْشِفُ الْحِجَابِ this is in Sahih Muslim Rasulullah said Allah reveals the veil and you see Allah Wallahi you see Allah you think Allah is going to hide himself from us? No. But here in this world, you can't see him because Allah created us in a way that we cannot see him yet. Right? You can't see him. He can, eyes cannot reach him. And hereafter, Allah makes it so that you can see him. And that is a reward for the people who enter paradise. He says that you look at Allah and you forget all the beauty that took your breath away first. And now the sight of Allah takes your breath away from all the beauty that you had seen before. Subhanallah. And then he says, how about I finish it with this? Allah says, Anni raditu alaykum. My pleasure is upon you forever and eternity. I will, you will never see from me being displeased with you. You don't have to obey, you don't have to worship, you don't have to do anything. Just enjoy. seems like even on that day people are still going to be given plenty of chances like a second chance um i'm a little confused the people that are going to hell are actually going to die or they're just going to be there burning for life otherwise this was quite interesting to listen to let me know what you guys actually think i wish i could touch on more but my battery is low uh so make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe if there's something that you guys want us to react to let us know in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to react to it